This situation, this whole speedrun situation, it's disappointing. It's a stain on the community, and I don't care what anyone's opinion is about it. I only care about the facts, the math, the numbers, the truth. You are able to form your own opinion, and you should. But to me, it's important that any opinion is always based on objective fact, not assumptions, not opinions, facts. So what do I have to offer the discussion of whether or not Dream's Minecraft 1.16 speedruns were cheated or not? Well, I want to present and explain the raw, objective numbers in a way that I feel that most have failed to do, in an easily digestible way. I also have numbers to show that were not initially presented in the minecraftspeedrun.com's moderator analysis, which is key to this discussion. I'm not discussing it to push an agenda. I'm not biased for or against anybody. I'm only in it to present the numbers in an easy to understand manner and allow for you to arrive at your own conclusions based on these numbers. Once I'm done covering the objective numbers, I'll get into a few other other points, like how often RNG values update in-game using an in-game mod, dissecting the numbers even further, among other things. So enough with the introduction, let's get right into it. So let's begin. Within the Minecraft Speedrun.com's moderator analysis, they said that the raw chances of Dream achieving the luck that he did when only considering his six live streams, including the final run, was roughly 1 in 20 sextillion. That's a 23 digit number. And yes, I know that this number is heavily biased. It's just our starting point. The odds will get better as we go along. But how did they arrive at this as their starting point? Well, well, when calculating the odds of whether or not any action will or won't happen, binomial distribution is the way to go. Now, I could go and explain how this works and what the formula is, but I really don't have to. All I need to do is go to Wolfram Alpha's binomial distribution calculator, punch in the relevant numbers, and hit the button, and you can do so as well. So the question becomes, what are the relevant numbers? Well, the way in which you arrive at 20 sextillion is by using the raw and again biased numbers from Dream 6 speedruns, including his very last run. In this case, we have to run two calculations, one for successful enderpearl barters and one for successful blaze rod drops. Let's start with ender pearls. To start, we have 262 gold ingots being tossed to a piglin in an attempt to get an ender pearl barter. The odds of getting an ender pearl barter from a piglin is 20 in 423, or just under 4.73%, and we're looking to get more than 41 pearls from these 262 barter attempts. That's what these numbers mean. When you punch in those numbers, you get this value, which when converted to a fraction means that the odds of getting this pearl luck or better by itself is 1 in 176.8 billion. When the numbers are punched in for blaze rods, which have a 50% chance of dropping from a blaze, getting more than 210 blaze rods for 305 blaze kills by itself is 1 in 113.7 billion. In order to get the combined likelihood of both of these events occurring inside of the same set of runs, all you have to do is just multiply the decimals together, which yields 1 in 20.1 sextillion. So that's how they did it. Now it's time to correct for this bias using only real numbers. The first and most obvious way to account for bias is to remove the last run from the equation. In Dream's very last run, which was his October 2020 personal best of 19 minutes and 24 seconds, he tossed three and gets to piglins and got two pearl barters. He also killed nine blazes and got eight blaze rods. So to start, 
this is what we're going to remove. Running all of the binomial distribution calculations again, the Perluck drops from 1 in 176.8 billion down to 1 in 17.4 billion, and the Blazelec drops from 1 in 113.7 billion down to 1 in 13.6 billion, a big improvement. But again, when combined, we still get the astronomically high value of 1 in 238 quintillion, but that's still just over 84.5 times less than the number we had before, which is, no doubt, an improvement. But there are ways we can improve the odds even further. Whether or not you think this next step is necessary is just a matter of opinion, but in Dream's rebuttal, he included information from his five prior live streams, which on their own fall more in line with what you would expect from Minecraft's odds. So for this next calculation, I am going to include these values. Now we have 11 live streams worth of numbers, excluding his personal best time of 1924. As far as hard data is concerned, this will be our limit. According to Dream's spreadsheet, in these older five streams, he tossed 356 ingots to piglins and got 12 pearl barters back. He also killed 134 blazes and got 73 blaze rods. So now, let's combine the numbers together. Now, we have a total of 615 piglin barter attempts, yielding 52 successful pearl barters, which puts the odds at this occurring, or better, at 1 in 19,403. And then, we have the combined blaze total of 430 blaze kills, yielding 276 blaze rods, which puts the odds of that occurring at 1 in 469 million. The likelihood of these two things occurring within the same batch of runs is 1 in 9.1 trillion. Even though I don't have any hard data left to go over, there are a few things left that I would like to consider. First off, it was often talked about that the RNG values within the game could have somehow bugged out, or frozen, or looped in such a way that would allow for this to happen. Well, for starters, if the RNG values do loop, they would only loop after 2 to the 48 calls of Java Random, since the RNG values pull a 48-bit number. Two, these RNG values update many, many times per second. I had this mod made by 55C3, which shows the individual RNG values for both the world RNG, which piglin trades are specifically tied to, and it shows the individual entity RNG values as well, which are applicable to blaze kills, both of which you can see on screen. As you can see here, the world RNG value, relevant again to piglin trades, updates well in excess of 5,000 times per tick. That's 100,000 times a second. And for blaze kills, each and every blaze has a distinct RNG value that updates 1 to 20 times per tick. So that's up to hundreds of times per second. So these values, they just can't be manipulated. And three, let's break down the original math even further, just as a thought experiment. The 1 in 9.1 trillion number is the likelihood that anyone would ever land on or exceed Dream's Luck ever if all they ever did was toss 615 gold to piglins and kill 430 blazes ever. This doesn't account for the fact that on October 10th, when Dreams 1924 was submitted to the speedrun.com leaderboard, 500 unique players had also submitted runs. In order to get the odds of Dreams luck happening ever to any player, we need to consider these runs as well, which requires a bit of speculation. First, we have to speculate how many runs have ever made it to the nether and initialized the bartering and killing process. There are 500 runners. I'm going to be generous here and say that on average, each and every one of them have had a thousand runs that made it to this process. I would speculate this number to actually be much, much lower. But again, this part of the video is just a thought experiment. So. 500 times 1,000 is 500,000. That's 500,000 total runs that the entire Minecraft speedrunning community will have ever done that made it to the nether and began to kill blazes and get piglin barters. 
From here, we need to divide 500,000 by the amount of runs that Dream had that ever reached this process as well, which according to the spreadsheets, he had 38 runs that made bartering attempts and 43 runs that killed blazes. The reason for this discrepancy is him having started one step, but then dying before reaching the other. So we'll use the lower number of 38 here, which further biases in his favor. 500,000 divided by 38 is roughly 13,158. From here, we can actually use the same exact binomial distribution calculation from before, but in this case, the probability of success is roughly 1 in 9.1 trillion, the number we found before. But we only need one success, and we have 13,158 attempts. When we run this math, we get 1 in 691,562,932 odds that Dream's Luck will have ever happened ever given every single potential speedrun of Minecraft that has ever been done, at least up to the point of Dream's 1924. Do you feel that these odds are possible? Do you feel that it's reasonable in Dream's last six dreams that absolutely none of the 32 runs that involved killing blazes resulted in him getting less than a 50% drop rate ever? Whatever your opinion is, you are entitled to it, as am I. And I'll leave you to guess what my opinion is. Just know that my opinion is only based on the math at hand. Not opinion, not how I feel about anybody, just the math. Alright, I wasn't going to do this, but I do need to give my opinion on a few things. And I'm not going to have any fancy footage over this part of the video, so just enjoy the view. I have nothing against Dream as a person. I have nothing against his content. I've spoken to Dream multiple times over the past year or so, and I believe him to be a pretty good guy at heart. As far as most popular Minecraft YouTubers are concerned, he's far from the worst we've ever had, and I would know. I've been here since the beginning. If anything, he's one of the better ones. You can argue points against his audience's mannerisms all you want, but the sheer amount of positivity that his audience feels from his content is something to be proud of. Millions of people find enjoyment in his content and probably have a better day, week, month, or even year because of his content. Millions of like-minded individuals have likely connected, many of whom will form lifelong friendships over their enjoyment of Dream's content. I don't care if Dream scripts or doesn't script his challenge-based content. It's entertainment after all. I don't care if he modified his game files to give himself better luck in a speedrun, even a live-streamed one. What I care about is that he then submitted that run to the Minecraft speedrun.com leaderboards. The official leaderboard where people go to show off their legitimate Minecraft speedrun accomplishments done legitimately. He spat in the face of 500 other hardworking individuals who legitimately worked for their accomplishments, who went through the turmoil of resetting run after run in order to eke out another personal best. The reason why I felt the need to make this video is because speedrunning is in my blood. I may not do it much these days, but I used to do it a lot in the past. I made this video because Dream decided that he didn't have to abide by the rules, that he didn't have to respect the 500 other speedrunners on the board at the time, and he still continues to not respect the thousand other Minecraft speedrunners who have submitted runs by now. If he had just admitted to all of this and moved on, I wouldn't have made this video, but I needed to. I'll be crediting those who helped me out with this video in the description down below. That just about does it for me for now. Thanks for watching.